6.49 this Friday morning, your top stories here from News 8 Sunrise Smart Start happening today. The National Guard will be here in Monroe County with members of the group helping the asylum seekers at the Holiday Inn downtown. We have Hayden Wentworth live there to explain what they're going to be doing. Hayden. Brennan, when they arrive, the National Guard will cover water and food distribution as well as circulate legal documents. A command center has been established as well for personnel on the ground. Now, Erie County already has been receiving support from the National Guard. There are four sites between the two counties where logistical and operational support will be offered. Each of those sites will have 27 members of the National Guard stationed there helping to, di to distribute necessities and provide general management of the site. Local State Assembly Member Josh Jensen says he's, he believes the county is doing what is advised for the severity of the situation by calling it calling in the National Guard. The Republican says he when the county faces issues like this, he needs to be they need to be more upfront with how it's being handled. The county has a process where they have to approve any hotels that want to take in migrants, and I think it's it's critically important that there is uh, communication. Uh, if that is to occur in the future. Certainly, if there's going to be a, a hotel and the county is going to approve a hotel to accept more migrants, the community needs to know about this. Certainly, uh, these individuals and these families are going to be taxing our resources here in Monroe County. Um, and certainly, the community should know in advance if and when this is going to happen so that we can be prepared. Currently, there are 40 individuals seeking shelter here in Monroe County, and whether or not there will be more migrants arriving and when has yet to be confirmed. Brennan, back to you. All right, Hayden, thank you. We'll be following that today once the Guard arrives. Turning to a proposal to restructure the police department here in Rochester. It has the union representing officers there worried about their safety. There's a key deadline today for all of this as well. According to the union, entire patrol sections could be eliminated. Contracts would take a hit and fewer officers would actually be out on the street. The city says this plan, a year in the making, would address two main issues, staffing shortages and current trends of violence. Mike Mazio, the head of the Locust Club, tells us he hopes he can convince the city to come back for another look before it's too late. Our demand is simple. Meet to discuss and negotiate the reorganization plan. Tell us why you think it will work, and we can tell you why we have concerns. Our hope is that we can convince the city to get on track here. We, we've come through every step of this saying we're here to ready to cooperate. The city claims the Locust Club six meeting requests in the last couple of weeks. The union adds today is the deadline for officers to make any transfer requests. That, they say, is part of the plan to reshuffle the ranks. A man charged with unlawfully carrying a weapon after a deadly shooting in the city just made his latest court appearance. This case goes back about a month ago during a shootout at the s and Lounge and Bar on North Street. Police say Dennis Speed took out a gun and shot and killed Irvin Wiggins. Speed is only charged with criminal possession of a weapon, and his attorney explains why that is. There was an assailant there, and whoever that assailant was, I think that person fired shots to protect people, hence the lack of murder charges, and the other individuals in the area were protected. Unfortunately, someone died, and any loss of life is always tragic. My understanding is that one person was the obvious aggressor in this situation. Another man, Porter Mizell, was killed in that shooting. Police have not arrested anyone else in that investigation. A teen is in custody in connection to a June deadly shooting. Police say 17-year-old Richard Crowder Jr. showed up at a party where 21-year-old Anthony Benilla was at and shot him. Police say the victim was targeted. Crowder is charged with murder and criminal possession of a weapon. Police believe he's been involved in other crime around the city. If you have any leads for that, you're asked to call the Major Crimes Unit. That number on your screen, 428 71 57. The 17 year old from Buffalo responsible for killing four other people in a deadly crash last year is going to prison. He will spend one and a third to four years behind bars. Last October, the team was speeding in a stolen Kia before crashing into a concrete embankment. Five passengers were thrown out of the car. A 14 year old girl, two boys ages 16 and 17, and a man 19 years old were killed at the scene. Another 14 year old girl did survive. The team going to prison was granted youthful offender status and that limited his sentence. 
Sunrise traffic here at 654. We still are keeping an eye on that sinkhole in Arondequoit uh, on St. Paul Boulevard up near the zoo. That area is going to be shut down at Paxton Road and Covington Road at least through today, possibly this weekend. We'll get an update on that. Elsewhere, you see there from the west side looking good coming in from Gates, Chilai area out on the east side. If you're headed in from Webster about to cross the Bay Bridge, everything is at speed there. As we get ready to close out the yeah. week, the weather, nice and cool. Yeah, closing out on us too a little bit, I think. Closing yeah. off that warmth at least. Back into the 60s today, and of course, coffee cast. You're going to want the hot coffee today, and maybe even a pumpkin spice latte. I'll give the one-day exception for it. It feels like fall out there. Temperatures today are going to be very similar to what we would see on August 1st. Things are dry for the morning commute right now, and they'll stay that way, I think, through at least the morning hours. By the time we get towards tonight, we'll see some scattered showers begin to pick up as lake effect rain begins to make an appearance. It's getting to that season, folks. Yeah. That cool weather's here, and it'll be here and we winter before you know it. Oh, let's slow down a little bit. All right, thank you, Liam. That will do it for us. Don't forget the Rochester Summer Soul Music Festival returns tonight. Big acts performing Friday and Saturday at Parcel 5. We've got the lineup on our website and playing us out, one of the best there is, Jimmy Highsmith Jr. He's on stage this evening.